Hello, this is day 17 of the Advent Calendar, and today we have the final part of the Nick Briggs interview. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am going to upload the entire interview in full. If you've been a bit bored of just sitting here and waiting for each video to load. Um, so yeah, you can find that in the link description down below. And you can also download it, because I am, um, you know, it's Christmas, be merry, etc. Hope you're all doing very well. Um, we got some cool stuff to come. I hope you enjoyed cosplay talk. Comment down below your thoughts about it. Um, and, you know, hopefully we're going to make even more next year. Tomorrow we have another episode of cosplay talk. So there won't be one of these introductions. And we also have a bit of memorabilia content, which I'm not going to be introducing like this, um, coming up. So, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. Advent calendar. I have no idea how we're doing at this point because it is only the 1st of December today. Hope you're doing well, guys. I'll see you soon. 50th anniversary next year. Yes. What would you like to, if you had control, what would you like to do? Both sides, you know, TV series, Daleks, and in the in the world of Big Finish, I bet you've probably got plans you can't. We've, can't I've got plans yes. that I can't talk about. I mean, ah. uh, I've got some, yes, we've got some plans, but there are more plans to make. It's difficult to know what to do, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, what do you do? You you have to find some way to tap into the essential flavour of Doctor Who, whether that's something from the past or creating something new for the future. I don't know. I wouldn't even presume to suggest what they should do on the television. I've, again, I've had a few, you know, just because of all my dealings with the BBC through Big Finish. You know, you what you do tend to find out what is likely to happen on the television, but they are mostly secretive. Sarah, Sarah, oh. Oh, I'm just back. Sarah, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. You know you're sorry. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so I don't. But yeah, there there are plans to be made. There we are. I came back just to say that. <laughs> um, last sort of thing. What advice would you give people if they wanted to go into writing or the direct producing? And yeah, the the uh, the essential thing about what you're talking about there is communication and storytelling, and that's been the through line in my career. Everything I've done has been to do with that. Even when I've gone off and worked in PR and you know for the Sci-Fi Channel, I was press and PR manager for a while. So it's communication, and the thing to do is to practice that. And now if you want to write stories, you should just keep writing and uh, give yourself permission to write. Because there's always that thing, you think, oh, well, it's just me. I'm just writing a story. Is anyone ever going to read this? I don't know. Give yourself the permission to write and tell the story and try and finish as much work as possible. Learn about writing the whole thing, reading it back through. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah. That's what I would say. Um, and the reason I now absolutely give this advice that there's a, a, a writer called Jonathan Barnes who's written a novelist called The Somnambulist. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but um, it was, it's a very successful novel. He's, he's written other stuff as well. And I met him years and years ago. I didn't remember meeting him. I, I bumped into him again at the last Big Finish Day. And he came up to me and said, we've met. And I thought, oh, I don't know who you are. What's going on? He said, you, I was 15 or 16 when I... Uh, met him he was 15 or 16 when I <laughs> met him uh, and he uh, he said that I said to you I wanted to be a writer and you said well write just write it doesn't matter what for for who write stories write stuff that interests you and he said I followed your advice and he said and here are my novels published by Harper Collins and you know got New York Times reviews and so that's my advice just keep doing it keep what what you do is what an old producer said to me about doing theatre and it doesn't matter what kind of theatre he said you put miles on your clock as it were you get the experience you know every time you tell a story from beginning to middle to end you have a narrative experience you learn more about a character even if you don't get any input from anyone else the, the good thing is to find places where you can get your work read by other people or you know it's very difficult to send work into companies like Big Finish or anyone else because there's this whole problem that you know, a few nutters spoil it for the rest, really, where they send in ideas and then suddenly that company does something and then they accuse them of having nicked their ideas. And, and we've had that once on Big Finish and we hadn't even read the idea that was sent in because we don't get time to read them. Uh, 
and so it makes you very wary of, of accepting ide unsolicited ideas. Like if you wrote to someone like Paramount, you would get your package back unopened with a note on it saying something like, we believe this to be a script submission, but we have not opened it and we have yeah. not read it and you have no claim over anything similar that we may ever do because people are terrified of that. Yeah. So, you know, keep writing, get together with, with other people, maybe, you know, doing drama stuff. I don't know whether, do you do drama at school? Um, no, I had to stop it, so I had um, braces and things like that and general time issues, but I'm going to go back into it. And they don't let you do drama because you've got braces? Well, no, I left my, that was very serious, I left my stage group because I didn't, it was starting to get a bit too expensive and wasn't oh. doing what I liked. And oh, well, that's fair enough. Yeah. Isn't it? But that's the thing, persist. Mm. Um, I mean, just personally, you know, my, my biggest problem in my career has always been, you know, because my family are not from any kind of acting or writing or anything background. Um, and you can see why the sons and daughters of famous actors or just actors or writers often go into that profession because it takes a lot to believe you have the right to do it. You yeah. know? When, when you're at an audition and you don't have anything behind you except your ability to maybe do something, you think, what am I doing here? Why should I be doing this? You know, whereas people who've been around it all their lives, whose you know, parents have had famous actors around for dinner and everything, it just seems, yeah. seems allowable. You know? And it's, it, that's the thing. Believe that if you want to do it and you, can, and you enjoy doing it and you can achieve it, even on your own, writing a story, then, uh, then you must, it's self-belief. And that need to communicate and find things you want to say and explore ideas. There's, there's no substitute for, you know, if you want to be a writer, just write in any circumstance. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I hope that helps. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Okay. I'm never short of a few words.